Good morning, everybody. We're going to get started right now with news you can use for Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. First up, we're going to talk about an article that came out in Fortune magazine last week on the 7th. Uh, the title of the article is Home Buyer's Remorse. Most people who bought a house recently have regrets. Um, digging into the article, it's very interesting. It says that three in four, 75% of all buyers for 2021 and 2022 have medium to severe regrets about buying that house. Number one reason stated is uh, for their remorse is that most overpaid, frankly. A uh, study that was done by Fortune Magazine says that approximately $77,500 was the average overbid for houses sold during that period of time. Um, in addition to that, most markets have dropped. So not only have people lost that $77,500 that they overbid, but those houses that were worth, say, four hundred dollars then are worth three eighty, three sixty dollars now. So uh, there's a lot of red ink out there. 35% of the people who bought homes are already in financial trouble. This is interesting because these weren't, uh, as we've deemed it in past episodes, shitbag mortgages. These were not mortgages that were written by blind mortgage brokers. These things were done with, with thought and with uh, careful, in theory, protections for the banks. They required deposits, decent credit scores, job verifiable job income, all these kinds of things. Even with that said, 35% of the people who bought the last two years are already having a hard time making their payments. So this is something that, you know, we will see over the next few years. Uh, generally, these things will turn one of two ways if the economy goes, continues to go south. This number will grow and these people will become more desperate, which is going to provide more sellers out there, more desperate sellers, albeit upside down in their, uh, their equity. Uh, or it, it could be uh, where it's going to shut down any additional purchases completely because people will be so scared of what's happened to those who went before them uh, that this is going to affect the market. Either way, it's going to affect the market. Uh, it can add to a slide if the economy goes up. You know, these people may be able to hang on at least a certain percentage of them. But that is a lot of people. 35% of everybody who bought homes the last two years is already in financial trouble over that mortgage payment. All right, that's first piece of news you can use. Second piece, and this is one that I got to say came out of the blue at me. I was not uh, projecting this, but an article that came from Market Watch late last week said for the first time in a number of years, in August, last month, just last month, rents nationwide fell. I was not projecting that. I was expecting that rents would continue to hold steady or to increase over the next couple of years because there is a demand for housing that can't be supplied by purchases. In other words, you know, people want to own a home. They can't own a home because of mortgage rates being so high, but they can rent homes. And uh, typically a, an early indicator, a canary in the mine shaft, as it were, for rental home pricing, uh, rental homes is you know, how the rents are going. Are they going up? Are they holding steady? Are they going down type thing? Uh, anyway, Market Watch, according to Market Watch last Friday, actually, this is from this morning. Um, it says that uh, rents from July to August dropped nationally, the first decline in two years. So we're going to keep an eye on that for you as well. Um, I don't see a major drop in a lot of these places just because housing is very dear. It's very short. It's in short supply. And I don't see as there's going to be an ultimate change in demand. Uh, it would take another 9-11 type event to really drastically change the, the demand, the flight path for people wanting to own a home. Um, and I don't see, you know, we don't see that happening. Hopefully something like that doesn't happen again. Anyway, uh, that's something to keep in mind. The, the third thing, a little bit more kind of fun uh, deal to talk about is... Um, the markets that are projected to grow the fastest. Now, this isn't per se just housing. These are cities that between now and 2060, so 38 years from now, I know that's a long horizon, but in this business with the average mortgage being 30 going to 40 years, uh, it's kind of good to plan ahead. But anyway, uh, long-term, these would be great markets to plant your flag into. Um, the, the list here is of 40 different cities, and I don't have time today to go through all of them. Uh, I'm going to go through just the 15 fastest growing cities, 
and give you my two cents worth as we kind of go through this list, uh, starting from 15 going to what they project to be the number one and why I think you want to stay out of the number one city that projected for growth. Uh, 15th expected growth rate, uh, and they're expecting between now and 2060, 103.6%. In other words, a doubling of the population in the next 38 years. San Antonio, New Brunfels, Texas. Number 14, Orlando, Kissimmee, Sanford, Florida, projected 104% increase. Number 13, Charlotte, uh, Concord, Gastonia, North and South Carolina, uh, 105%. Number 12, uh, Fairhope, Foley, Daphne, Daphne, I'm not sure how to say that, Alabama, uh, 108%. Number 11, Port St. Lucie, Florida, uh, 110%. Number 10, Cary, Raleigh, North Carolina, 112% increase. Uh, number nine, Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, it's, a, it's a good area. I like the area. Uh, already working in that area, projected to go up 112%. Number eight, uh, Charleston, North Carol North and North Charleston, South Carolina, 113%. Number seven, St. George, Utah. You notice on a lot of these cities as I'm going through, these are not the biggest cities in the country. These are not top 30 tier cities. These are uh, cities that run from like 100, 100 biggest or 150 largest cities in the U.S. to 30. So this is that second tier market that, you know, I think you guys should all focus on if you're going to pick a specific market to go into. Anyway, seven, St. George, Utah, 113%. Number six, Dallas, Fort Worth. This is an exception to this. This is one of the largest cities in the U.S. Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Texas. And I would project that the places like Arlington, the suburbs of Dallas, Fort Worth, will grow at a faster rate. Anyway, they're projecting 115%. Uh, number five, and this is one that I would not, I, previously I would not consider investing in, but they are making a strong case for a 118% growth. In other words, a doubling. Uh, this, this city, this area is uh, a million and a half population today. It's fairly big, projected to grow to 3.2 million. Uh, and it's Las Vegas, Henderson, Paradise, Nevada. That area is growing fast, but I think it's going to continue to grow fast. Um, they have access to water, which is out here on the west uh, coast, is very important. They have Colorado River water, uh, so they have essentially an endless supply of water. So I don't see any reason uh, geographically, uh, resource-wise, why they can't grow. And it is a, an affordable opportunity, affordable alternative to living in California. Um, number four, uh, McAllen, Edinburgh, Mission, Texas, down on the southwest border of Texas. Uh, I like this area, 123%. Um, a big growth rate from 400,000 to over 900,000 is what they're projecting. Uh, number three, uh, Provo and Orem, Utah. Uh, same thing, 123%. Number two, Austin, Round Rock, and Georgetown, Texas. 153%. This is going to be a huge area of Texas. This is going to be the next big city of Texas. Austin, Round Rock, Georgetown, this, this Tri-Cities area. Uh, currently, they have 1.7 million people. Surprising that they have that much, and it's projected to go up to 4.2 million. So uh, if you like Texas as a long play, uh, Dallas is kind of overplayed. I like Houston. Houston is still second largest city in the U.S. People love to go there. Uh, but they have a lot of hurricanes, and, you know, and then San Antonio is, is next. Uh, this is further down the list, but this might be a good alternative if you like Texas investment, uh, Georgetown, Austin, Round Rock. Uh, and then finally, number one, and this is one I would not invest in, the villages in Florida, 276% projected increase. The villages, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, um, all right. And, and these aren't big numbers. Uh, this is only going from 53,000 to up to 200,000. Uh, the Villages is essentially a retirement city. And its growth is projected because of the baby boomers uh, and the flight to uh, Florida and the southwest, southeast uh, to more red states. Uh, people are moving into this area. It's a little, it's harder to buy and sell. It's not a huge market, although it has a high growth rate. Uh, you know, I, I try and stay away from senior only communities or just they have a lower turnover. Uh, 
you know, the, the nice thing is that your, your tenants tend to stay there until they're carried out. Sorry, I was being a little crass there, but that's the truth. They will stay in a place until they're gone. Uh, the, the downside is they will, uh, you know, nickel and dime you the whole time. <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's just how it is. And so, and they're hard to sell. Um, you know, you got to find somebody else who's similarly situated, not just uh, demographically age-wise, but also financially. So, uh, although it's number one, I would I would tend to stay away from that market. So there's some good ones there. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff from 20, from 16 up to 40. Uh, if you get uh, an opportunity, go to 47 Wallet, uh, W-A-L-L, -L, Wall Street, sorry, 47wallstreet.com. And an article just came out that talks about this. So I would take a look at those. Anyway, those are some good areas, food for thought, if you're going to focus on one market. Uh, and uh, that's it for today. News you can use. like to wish everybody a great week. And we will see you guys all on Thursday. Bye-bye, everybody.